We ended our discussion on the creation of human beings with the observation that men and women are created in God's image. What exactly does this mean? What is the image of God? There are several ideas on the image of God, and we will briefly survey three of them. The first is the functional view. This view is based on Genesis 1.26. Immediately after God says, let us make man in our image, he seems to clarify that with the statement, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth. This suggests that being made in God's image means that human beings have a role of authority in God's creation. In other words, we are God's vice regents on earth, his second in command. God created the universe to glorify and worship him, and he placed human beings in charge of orchestrating this cosmic song of praise. We are tasked with overseeing God's creation to glorify him. We are his servant kings. In other words, according to the functional view, the image of God is something we do. The second is the relational view. This view is based on Genesis 1.27. Right after it states that God created man in his own image, it clarifies, male and female he created them. In other words, God created people as relational beings. It's worth noting that God does not say, let me make man in my image. He says, let us make man in our image, hinting at the eternal relationship he enjoys in the Trinity. Since God is a relational God, he designed us to have relationship with himself and each other. In other words, the image of God is something that we have. The final idea we'll consider here is the substantive view. This view is based on Genesis 2-7, where God formed man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Men and women are the only creatures into which God is said to have breathed the breath of life. The breath of life is closely linked to the Holy Spirit. In Hebrew, the words for breath and spirit are the same. In other words, this view observes that human beings have an inner spiritual quality that God imparted to us. The image of God is based in our spiritual or immaterial component, such as our morality, our logic, our conscience, and so forth. So this view would emphasize that the image is something that we are. So, which is it? Which is it? All three views make good points and have strong scriptural support. It is best to consider all three as different elements of the image of God. First, God is a spiritual being who exhibits morality, logic, and personality. Therefore, he designed us with a spiritual nature in addition to our physical bodies. Second, God has relationships. He is a relational God existing forever in three persons. So he designed him to have relationship with him. We cannot fulfill our role apart from himself and each other. Finally, God does exercise rule and dominion over his creation. So, he designed us as his servant kings or vice regent, empowering us with the task of overseeing creation and channeling its worship back to him. It doesn't take us long to observe that the world today doesn't look very godly. We'll consider the effects of sin in detail in the next lesson, but for now, we should briefly consider how it impacts the image of God. Do we still bear God's image? The Bible teaches that we do still retain God's image, even though we are fallen creatures. According to Genesis 5, the image of God was passed on from Adam and Eve to their children, even after they sinned. In the day when God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. When Adam had lived 130 years, he became the father of a son in his own likeness, according to his image. So Cain was born in Adam's image, 
who had in turn been created in God's image. The image was passed on. Because of this, people can still do good things. People like Albert Einstein, who is pictured here, come up with great ideas and achievements. That said, we can also do a lot of terrible things. This is because the image of God was marred when Adam and Eve sinned. 1 Corinthians 15.49 teaches that the image is indeed in need of restoration. It says that we have borne the image of the man of dust. In other words, sin has corrupted the image. But it promises that through Jesus, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. The image will be restored. Until then, people will continue to use their God-given capabilities for evil. In Christ, however, the image is restored. Is it, a, it is a gradual process, being completed partially in this life and fully once our salvation is complete. Colossians 3.10 teaches that we put on the new self, who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. Note that Paul says the new self is being renewed. The process isn't done yet. Even so, believers can use their God-given abilities to glorify God once more. 